Opportunity Knox. To those of you affected by this redacted, there is hope for you. There is a hero shining in the darkness. Now who would rise to the occasion but GameStop? Allow me to explain. If you're looking for employment, if you're looking for a place to earn some income while this whole thing blows over, GameStop has your back. That is, if you want to try to sell people services they do not want. GameStop has been on the decline for a long time now. Their stocks have been dropping very steadily over the past few years, even more so over the past six months. This is why they appointed former president of Nintendo, Reggie fils to their board of directors. It's been a crazy ride with GameStop lately, but now they've reached a new frontier. To those of you who are unfamiliar, in some states, the National Guard and other government officials are going to different stores and ordering people to go home, forcibly closing businesses with government authority. Think about that for a second. Whatever you might think of that, GameStop decided to stand up for the working man. And how did they decide to stand up for the working man? Let's check out this leaked internal email. Due to the products we carry that enable and enhance our customers' experience in working from home, we believe GameStop is classified as essential retail and therefore is able to remain open during this time. We have received reports of local authorities visiting stores in an attempt to enforce closure despite our classification. Store managers are approved to provide the document linked below to law enforcement as needed. Contact your district manager with questions. Now, let us speculate, no, let us imagine a scenario that might unfold if a dedicated manager refused to close the store when the National Guard came through. What I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall if that were to play out. Do you guys think GameStop would pay for this man's legal fees if he were to be hypothetically dragged away and placed in jail? Maybe they'll give him a coupon for buy two get one free Funko Pop. Of all places to make essential, why GameStop? A lot of people are purchasing things digitally anyway. As much as I appreciate keeping these people employed, I'm sure a lot of them would rather be at home playing video games. After all, Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing both come out tonight. I'm sure there are people who bought their physical games and want them, but maybe closing after these two big releases come through would be, I don't know, a professional thing to do considering no one's going into GameStop anyway. Not a lot of people anyway. The reason for this is that the store has become less video game centric and more collectible centric. You have no doubt seen these Funko Pops everywhere, and at first they were a thing to collect, they were kind of neat, a little novelty item, and then after a few months they are all over the place. They made so many of these things that most of the collectors were put off and most people stopped collecting them. There will no doubt be landfills filled to the brim with these things. Now GameStop has become a bit of a Funko Pop store. Large portions of the store would be dedicated to these figurines. Large portions of the store. And they even worked out the PC section, the meaning personal computer section of their stores. Also, if you've ever bought something from GameStop, you've probably had the experience of them trying to sell you their GameStop Pro subscription service every time you go to buy anything from the store. And then they scan your account and they see how much money you could have saved if you had their Pro service. They pitch it super hard because they have to sell these things. The store went from being a hobby store for video games and became this weird subscription collectible store. I haven't had this other experience, but people were also saying that recently, over the past few months, they have been incentivized by corporate to ask people who have cell phones on them that if people are using their cell phones in store, to pitch to them that they can buy their cell phone right there, sign them up for GameStop's Cricket phone service, and give them a refurbished phone. The company then scraps whatever phones they're able to get for used parts and that's how they're making their money. It's really, really desperate. I'm not sure how true it is, but apparently that's what's going on over at GameStop. That's how desperate they've become as a company. I can't say from my own experience because I myself have not gone into GameStop for a long time. Right around the time they started becoming more of a collectible store. Plus, I buy all of my games digitally anyway. Here's a tip for those of you who have a PS4. You can set your primary PS4 as another PS4, and then on your own PS4, 
which isn't designated as your primary console, you have access to all of your library as long as you're online. On your primary console, somebody else can play all of your copies of the game even while you are playing on your other console. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So say a friend of yours, somebody you trust, has their console set as your primary PS4, they have access to your entire library. They can even play your games while you are playing the same game, and you can even play together on the same purchased copy. This makes digital purchases incredibly valuable. Multiplayer games heavily benefit from this. I've heard there's something similar with Xbox, but I can't say from personal experience. Now, Reggie fils from Nintendo was recently appointed to the board of directors. I mentioned that earlier in the video. It's important to point out that he doesn't officially start until April. There are a lot of shenanigans going on right now, but this was the one that stuck out to me the most. Imagine being the person who made this call. Physical copies of games are nice to have, but they don't even contain a lot of the benefits that buying the physical copy used to contain. It used to be you would get an instruction manual that was fully photographic and had some neat art and would tell you about the game, the lore, uh, random things that they didn't fit into the game itself. Sometimes they would include a poster or a map or something neat. Now it's a slip of paper and the disc, and that's it. Just another sign of the industry slowly shriveling away. There are a lot of services out there that provide physical copies for independent games as well as cult classics from the PS2, PS3 era. You have Limited Run and a few other places. Limited Run has also had competitors start to rise up. This proves that there is a demand in the market for that sort of thing. Still, the premium edition of these games, they include something that is so expensive, like Doom Eternal for instance, which is something I'm super excited for, but they had a $200 edition of the game that came with a helmet. They are far from the first in that regard too. There are all sorts of ridiculous special editions of games out there that have a bunch of stuff nobody really wants. But if you had a $60 version of the game that maybe it came with a digital copy too, that would be good. Or a keychain that came in the case with an instruction manual, that will incentivize people to buy it. But instead they've taken the cheap route and it's incentivized people like myself to purchase things digitally. Buying digitally does have some downsides as well, but I feel that the good outweighs the bad. Once my internet goes down though, it's an entirely different story. Still, in a lot of cases, these physical copies will only contain a portion of the data and you will still have to download an update. Rarely do you actually have the full game on a disc or for the Switch a cartridge. It's just the way things are now. So you're pretty much buying digitally for the most part anyway. From GameStop's perspective, the industry was going in an unfortunate direction. Instead of evolving in a way that would meet the demands and the wants of consumers, they instead tried to branch out and they spread themselves way too thin and tried to appeal to a market that didn't have any demand. At first, it did have a little bit of demand. Oh hey look, that's a figurine of that character from a game I like. Then the next time you go in there, you see that the whole store has been replaced with Funko Pops, different variations, and they're trying to sell you like eight of them at a time. Oh hey, here's a new mystery box where you have a chance of getting the one you want, with an ultra rare chance at getting a shiny, or a gold one, or whatever it was. And yes, I do speak from experience, unfortunately. At the time, there weren't too many video game collectibles out there. And this is probably why so many of these games started coming out with $200, $300 versions that came with a statue of the character. It was just a bit much. It didn't even work for Wolfenstein 2, where they had an action figure, like an old fashion action figure of the main character. It wasn't even very expensive, but it still didn't sell very well. I mean, if you're going to make something stupid for me to collect, at least make it look cool. And that brings me back to Funko Pops. At first, they were kind of neat, but when there were a million of them, and they're not very cool looking, it became very unappealing very quickly. On top of that, a few years back, Amazon started doing pre-orders that would give you a discount on the game. So not only would Amazon give you free shipping and day one delivery, but you would also save $10 buying through them. GameStop just couldn't compete with that. Yeah, you could go pick it up in store at midnight, or you could go to sleep and wait a few hours and 
play it the following day have saved $10, $12, which is more than you'll save on the game for several months following release, and you wouldn't have even needed to decline yet again the GameStop Pro service when you went to pick up your game in store. They literally ask you that every single time you go to the cash register. I know it sounds crazy, but if GameStop could be about games, they would be better off. It's not even a bad idea to have a section dedicated to tabletop games either. But less on the Funko Pops, less on the subscription service, less on phone service, and more on the video games. I know it's complicated, but I feel clearly that is the obvious move. Instead of providing the service that people wanted, they began trying to provide services that people didn't want. If I was GameStop right now, what I would do is I would set up bars. Gaming themed bars, because most video game people have grown up now, and they like to drink, a good portion of them. And I think a lot of people would like to drink and play video games together. Now because it's a bar, you can avoid people using you as a liaison discount babysitter, which is what ends up happening when you typically set up one of these play-by-the-hour video game stores. But if it was more like a bar, you could circumvent that. Of course, then you would have to abide by different statewide alcohol laws, but even still, I think that would be much more of an easier thing to deal with than people dropping their kids off for hours at a time. Anyway, I just some thoughts about this whole GameStop thing. I guess now that I'm a YouTube neat, I would have to tell you to uh, like, comment, and subscribe, hit that smash button, but I don't think I'm going to change all that much. I know I still technically said it, but you know. We like to have fun here.